Arkin very similar to a roller coaster ride, except you're the one that's driving the roller coaster. Top speed would be somewhere between 70 and 80 miles an hour. You're hitting a lot of G-forces when you go through the turns. You're constantly driving. You have to be in good condition um, you know, to handle the curves. It's true that you do have control, and it's true that you do drive. But it is also true that when you make a mistake, it's a potentially dangerous sport. Well, when you're having a good run, everything flows real smooth. You know, the feeling of speed is there, and it's, it's really an incredible feeling because you have, I mean, you can, you can drive anywhere you want on the track, but I don't know, you're, you're in complete control. And so there's nothing like the feeling of just going out there and just being on the line, you know, being on the edge of uh, excellence. In many ways, luge would seem to be a simple sport, familiar to anyone whose childhood included snow, a sled, and a steep hill. But there's a quantum leap from recreational sledding to world-class luge competition. It would be like going from playground basketball to the NBA. The sport of luge places unique demands on the athlete. The slider needs quick reflexes, good eye-hand coordination, physical strength, great powers of concentration, a special sense of spatial awareness, and nerves of steel. In short, the sport demands committed, well-trained athletes. It's a very mental sport, one where a person has to remain calm and utilize their complete mental facilities in order to correctly drive the sled down the run. Good driving skills, athletic ability, um, and basically time on the sled. There is a lot of skill involved in the sport. It takes a long time to master that skill, probably more time than people and athletes realize. It takes a good, we feel, eight to 10 years to become competitive on the international circuit. But even the best sliders can't win without the best sleds. The modern luge is a high-tech marvel, fabricated from space-age materials to reduce wind resistance and draft. It's equally as important as your driving ability, I believe. And next week, we'll look further into the technology as well as the history of luge. But right now, let's go to the Kicken Luge Championship, standing by at Mount Van Hovenberg, John Morgan and Lynn Hancock. Thanks, Tim. Hi, everybody. I'm John Morgan. With me, Lynn Hancock, coach of the National Junior Luge Team here. We're here at Mount Van Hovenberg, Lake Placid, New York, to cover the North American Men's Luge Championships, brought to you by the United States Post Office. Lynn, we've got a pretty good field here. We sure do. Of course, they're coming from the men's start. They all have to be of quality. First man up from the United States, Gordy Shear from Croton, New York. He's 19 years old. Deferred college to come out and compete in Luge. Pretty good start, then. Yeah, he's off the handles well, settles nicely, making a nice, easy drive into curve four. Whoop, drop down a little bit low, rows on the X a little bit. That's going to cost him a little time, John. Well, our first split here is under the bridge split, as they count. That's not a bad time there, 11.43. That should be okay. It's not real fast ice today. Real fast splits from there are low 11 seconds, and I think the fastest I've seen have been in 1095. Into curve 10, into the big omega curve, 11. Slight drop there. Could cost him a little time. Into 12. He's looking okay, John. Not a lot of variance here. You see the, you see the legs shaking, the head's moving. You know he's got some problems. A pretty good lean into the finish corner, 55 miles an hour. Through the finish clock, not a bad time for Gordy Shear. 40.33. That should stack up pretty well for his first run, John. Next up from the United States, Mark Gramet from Muskegon, Michigan. Another guy, 18 years old, deferring college to try and earn a spot in the 1992 Olympic luge team. He's off. And he's entering curve four. Mark's done a real nice job on the fall tour this year in Europe. He really was turning some fast times in the World Championship uh, track at Winterberg. He's under the bridge. 
First split, 11.39. That's a, that's a fine split. Oh, having, having some problems in the labyrinth, though. Oh, you can see he really is having a problem with his line. Now he's in nine. He's got himself sorted out. But that's cost him some time, John. Well, just take a rocket scientist to figure out that's not the proper line to go down the course. If you're bouncing off the walls like that, you can just almost see he's got less speed through curve 12. And the problems, you know, that he had up at the top part of the course, he'll never be able to make up that time. So he can't be happy with his run right now. We see the legs really shaking, a bumpy track. He's under the bridge. Finish time of 40.83 for Mark Grimet. It's almost a full second off the pace of uh, Gordy Scher. Half a second off the pace. Not a good heat for Mark Grimet from Muskegon, Michigan. Next up on the course from the United States, it's John Edwards, 17 years old. He's a senior at Thayer Academy in Boston. Oh, good powerful start, John. He reefed off those well, hills. Good, track. Quick paddles. Cut him real close to the left wall into four, but that's the key. You want to get as deep as you can into curve four, looking real good. He had his uh, knee up like he was really trying to uh, maneuver the sled. Well, How easy is that? Well, you know, you want to lift the sled. That helps hook a runner, and that helps the sled respond, and it helps the sled drive a little better. Into curve nine, that's a fine line, parallel, safe line. Into curve ten, he's looking real good. You can see the feet really bouncing. That's the G-force, and, of course, pitching those feet really steers the sled. Out of 12, he's he's going to go okay. He's looking fine. Into curve 14, bouncy track, a lot of bumps. Under the bridge, a finish time of 40.38. That currently puts him in second place, just five one hundredths of a second off the pace set by Gordy Shear at this time. Not a bad run for John Edwards from Boston. Luge is a very technical sport. Len Hancock takes a look at the equipment and gives us an idea what the competitor slides down on. Reeves from Mount Baldy, California, another American. How does somebody from California get involved in this sport? John, it wasn't too difficult for Brandy, who's off in real fine well, fashion, that. hooking into curve four. He, uh, he's Bonnie Warner's half-brother, so I think we all know the news on Bonnie Warner and her lose career. Through curve five, he's kept a nice little even line. 11-26, first split. That's the fastest split we've had of the day, John. You think it was uh, a start, or you think he just maneuvered better? He's worked Dusty on his start over the years, and he's really Lady developed Cross. a fine start, and his line through those curves has been exceptional. He's a veteran of this track, John. Some 10 years of uh, practice and competition has, uh, he's really got it down real well. Well, a good run going for Brandy Reeves so far as he comes to the finish, the feet shaking under the bridge, through and down. Time, 39.994, the fastest time of the day. With that time, he's easily he's got a lock on first place, but we have to remember it's just the first heat, so there's still plenty more to come. Next up, 16-year-old Dusty Grant from the United States, Wilton, New York. I give a little history of this guy. I used to watch his grandfather and father slide on the bobsled run, Ed and Dan Grant. Yeah, Dusty. And then, then his father was an Olympian in 1976, Dan Grant. So time from the bobsled run to the loose track. Yeah, he's from a sliding family, no question about it. Dusty Grant has come a long way. He's been on this track now for three, four years, under curve five, out of curve five, in 11.51. That's not a real strong first split, but he's really working on his consistency. Slide, skids up slightly in curve eight. That's going to cost him a little time, John. Well, let's watch his feet there. That's the G4 shaking the feet, and you can see it here in the big omega corner, into 12, where all the problems exist for some of the sliders. Pretty smooth there. He yeah, handled it well. He really has good position on the sled. John, you see he's really stretched out. Oh, oh a little oh, problem with his entrance in the 14. Almost lost it, but he maintains control. Gets it through and down in a time of 41.61 seconds. That's not really going to stack up real strong. And you can see he's a little despondent, not real happy with his first heat. That's Dusty Grant. He's thinking about it. A little pat on the back from the coach. Still got another heat to go, so the coach wants to keep him, keep him pumped up. You wonder what type of personality is drawn into the sport of luge? Well, our next competitor is a 13-year-old Tyler Seitz from Calgary, Alberta. He's a lot of the uh, what they call new aesthetics are also uh, sports like snowboarding and uh, downhill skiing and hang gliding, like the activity, like the adventure, like the speed. Here's Tyler now into curve four. Oh, he had problems right off the bat, John, hitting the right wall before curve four. Into curve five, right near the first split now. He's new at the sport, real stiff on the sled, he looks. And reflected in his first split time, a time of 12.16. That's not going to be terribly competitive against a strong American field, John. Now, again, these new competitors, 13 years old, uh, uh, it's obvious right there the way the feet are bouncing that uh, he's not real relaxed in the sled. 
No, and he's having a tough time steering it. Uh, you know, a good position on the sled goes hand in hand with the ability to drive it, and he's not really getting it to do what he wants it to do in these curves right now. It's just too tight, just too tense. That has to do with lack of experience, John. He's throwing down in a total time of 42.52 seconds, and so that's going to put him well behind the American field right now, the strong American field. Well, it might be the first time they see this 13-year-old, but probably not the last. Tyler Seitz from Calgary, Alberta. No, a real good effort and probably one of the stronger hopefuls in the junior division for the Canadians. Results after the first round for the North American Junior Men's Lose Championships. From the United States in first place, Brendy Reeves from Mount Baldy, California. Comfortable lead over Gordy Scher in second place, Croton, New York. Third place from Boston, John Edwards. Fourth place, Mark Grimet from Muskegon, Michigan. Dusty Grant from Wilton, New York's in fifth. And Canadian Warren Cronin is the top Canadian in sixth place. And the rest of the field in the North American Men's Lose Championships. Some pretty exciting action, John. The Lee Warner product from out in the San Francisco, California area. Yeah, Chris has worked very hard for four years now. This is his fourth year in the sport. And uh, so he's entering curve two. Real slow speech from that lowered men's start. Makes it oh. real tough. Oh, that oh. top of sled, you could see in the transition he was yeah. having problems. He had real problems there. That's going to cost him a lot of time. That, you, that's time you can never make up. He's entering curve five. He's smooth there. The exit, the first split, 2162, not stacking up, John. He's, well, gonna, he's playing catch up ball here. Well, in a sport of hundreds and thousands of seconds, to be a second off the pace up top is not going to cut the muscle. Oh, and another problem right. back in the labyrinth, late Ooh. off eight. Very high there, low. Up very and down. Up and loop. down. He's going to lose lose a lot of time exit off at 12 and he's into 14 but uh, he's already lost time he's not gonna make it up under the bridge his final time 46.94 seconds is the first uh, heat for Chris Cabral he made it down safely but certainly not a fast run that's gonna put him well off the pace for the first heat at the start from New York City and a Yale graduate 27 year old Dan Shepard What's a Yaley doing in this sport at this age? I don't know. I asked him why he isn't down in New York City making investments. I mean, I'm giving him my money. I expect him. Whoa! Well, he's lost problems. He's got some problems there. High in three. and uh, But he makes it through the 2-3 area. Real tough area when you're going so slow. Once again, from the men's start handles into curve five. 21-63. Uh, he must have lost all that time up there in those first two corners when he uh, gave us a little thrill. But... So far, he's coming down the course pretty smooth. Yeah, he straightened it out in the labyrinth. I thought he was going to be in trouble. A little high in the beginning of 11. Lost a little time there, but now brings it through from 11 Whoa. to 12. Skids up again oh, high. Oh, you spray. can see the uh, see the snow come flying in the hog pen area between 12 and 13. Definitely broke away, skidded there. Cost him a lot of time. But he's through and down in a time of 47.73. And the Yaley, I'm sure, just happy to be at the bottom. Dan Shepard. Well, he's... Gives us a look, and he's thinking about it. I'm sure that he's happy he's down. He hasn't had a lot of training this year, and that's probably cost him a little bit. Results after the first heat of the Senior Men's North American Lose Championships. John Owen from the United States is in first place, followed very closely by the Canadian John and Harry Hello. Salmon from Canada. Pretty good competition so far. Real good, John. In fact, uh, the Canadians, Jean Doyon and Sam Salmon, have fared real well on this track, their home track, of course, being Calgary. It's a tough track here in Lake Placid, and they've just done real well. Okay, back in the studio. Let's have a, let's have a look. Under the bridge, through and down for Dusty Grant. Much better time, 40.756. Much better time for Dusty Grant. He knows it. He's smiling. He knew he had a good heat. If you can't hit me. Up at the start. The only competitor to turn a 39-second time in the first heat, Brendy Reeves from Mount Baldy, California. Had a great heat. Here he's at the start. He's pretty aggressive off the start. Has to make a slight correction going into curve four. But you see him hooking the runner with his left leg. That gets him in nicely into four, John. Well, again, the first clock here is underneath this bridge. He had the fastest split, the fastest finish. And let's see, 11.32. Again, a little bit of snow on the track. That's real consistent, though, John, and he's carrying a real nice line down the track through the labyrinth. The snow shouldn't be a real problem. May slow the times up a little bit. Into the Omega Series, 10, 11, 12, Brendy Reeves. Looking very consistent here at curve 12. Yeah, he's handling it real well. He's a seasoned competitor, been on this track now for eight years training. He's the brother of Bonnie Warner. He's through and down in a time of 40.163, John. That's a total time of... One minute, 20 seconds, point one five seven. That's going to be a real tough time to catch, John. He's got three more competitors after him now. Brendy Reeves 
should be looking at a North American championship if his time stands. The United States Postal Service recently announced its status as an official worldwide sponsor of the 1992 Olympic Games. Let's take a look at their commitment to amateur athletics. For 3,000 years, the eternal flame has represented the enduring spirit of the Olympic Games, embracing the ideals of individual excellence and international harmony. Announcing its sponsorship of the 1992 Games, the U.S. Postal Service affirmed its commitment to these ideals. Participation in the Olympics is one of the noblest and most productive avenues through the complexities of international diplomacy and commerce. It provides a worldwide forum for individual athletes their teams and the nations they represent. At the invitation of the U.S. Postal Service, postal administrations of more than 40 countries have joined the Postal Service to create the largest international infrastructure ever to sponsor the Olympic Games. Even though the games are global in scope, competition always begins with one athlete on one playing field trying his or her best. And now that one playing field is in Lake Placid, New York. The U.S. Postal Service is sponsoring Olympic-style competitions in luge and bobsledding events, competition that will help our athletes prepare for the Olympic Games. At speeds exceeding 90 miles an hour, teamwork and daring are ingredients for success. Robert Helmick, president of the U.S. Olympic Committee, puts the Postal Service's Olympic sponsorship in perspective. It takes on a special meaning for us, and not only because of the financial support that it gives us, but more importantly because there are the undeniable visibility and reputation of this Postal Service as a high, the most highly respected institution in every hamlet, in every village, in every town, in every great city uh, of this nation. Just as the eternal flame symbolizes the spirit of the Olympics, the U.S. Postal Service, through its sponsorship of the Games, affirms that all America stands behind its Olympic team. Next up, John Edwards, one of our leaders up at the top. Not as good at the start as some of the other people. Yeah, but John, he's really worked hard on it. He settles Let nicely in the sled. He was third after the first heat, hooking that runner to get in deep into curve four. Nice job. Could have been a little flatter with the head. Into curve five. This one's sprint time. Ladies, four, four. That's pretty good with the snow conditions. That's better in his first heat, so he looks like a better heat here for him. Yeah, he goes in a little late there into curve eight and hangs on a little bit, slaps out of there. Could be a little problem time-wise for John uh, coming down through the labyrinth. A little high in the beginning of 11, but now he's fine into 12. Good speed shot there. You get an idea of almost 60 mile an hour speeds here on the Olympic luge course in Lake Placid. Into the finish corner, John Edwards. Under the bridge through and down, a time of 4.74, almost 40 hundred slower. But considering the conditions, that might be a pretty good time. Well, he was really happy, I'm sure, with his, at least his first split. He's talking with the coaches there. The youngest competitor here in the North American Men's Junior Lose Championships is Tyler Seitz, right here, 13 years old, from Calgary, Alberta, preparing for his second Let descent. That's a conservative start, John. And here we see him going into the curve where he had problems. Oh, he had problems the first run. And now he's almost lost total control. So he's lucky to keep it on his steals going into five, John. Well, his first split time, 12.16, is probably much slower here, and it's 12.81. He lost a lot of time. He did. He was ninth after the first run, and I don't think this is going to help his cause too much, John. Well, here he goes through the labyrinths, the three-corner combination, into the first big Omega corner coming in right here. Look at his feet bounce again. He's real tight on his sled. It takes a while for them to learn this, develop the art of relaxation on the sled, but we see him getting it through 12. Into the finish, it's Tyler Seitz, 13 years old from Calgary, Alberta. Really stretching for the finish light now. He's suing down under the bridge, a finish time of 43.80 seconds, making his total time 126.32. Well, that's not going to be terribly competitive, but he did well to get it down the hill, I think. He's a finisher, and that's important for a 13-year-old, somebody that the Canadians have a lot of hope in, and I'm sure we'll probably see a lot more of him in this decade. Next up in the start blocks, it's Gordy Scher from Croton, New York, 19 years old, and in second place at the end of the first heat. John, he's really got to let it all out let if he's going to catch Brendy. Uh, Gordy is one of our smallest losers, physical stature, something he's had to deal with, and oh, he had a little problem getting into four, so right off the top, uh, this could hurt his first split, John. Well, he needs a decent split. He had a 
11.51 there, and I don't know if that's going to help him. Again, it's hard to tell from the first to second heats because of the snow in the track. John, typically the, sl uh, the track gets a little slower on the second heat, so this, uh, this isn't going to help his cause any. In 11, pretty flat line. Exit of 11 is smooth, and so he's going to be negotiating the course oh, probably without too much a trouble. Bit there. A little bumpy track for him, but he's through and down. Finish time of 40.95, so that's six tenths slower than his first heat. Total time of 121.29. That drops him back into third place, so I don't know if he really has an idea what he did. He's going in to get weighed. The final results for the North American Men's Junior Lose Championships, obviously a home field advantage for the United States, sweeping the top six places. Brendy Reeves in a total time 120.157, almost a full second behind is John Edwards. Only 16 hundredths of a second behind him, though, was Gordy Shear, followed by Dusty Grant, Mark Grimet, Chris Coughlin, Tyler Seitz, the Canadian in seventh place, and the rest of the field. When we come back, it's the big guys, the North American Men's Lose Championships, here on Winter Speed. West Germany for U.S. Olympic...